the first episode of Game Changers. It concerns a relatively simple method to significantly reduce the use of fuel. We can see an exponential growth in every field of technology, but the use of gasoline has remained approximately the same over the last 100 years. Chances are the car you currently own gets somewhere in the range of 20 to 30 miles per gallon. If you're on the high end, you might even feel pretty good about that MPG. There's a problem though. Cars back in the 1920s were capable of getting the same miles per gallon. So we will take you on a journey into this technology, but also reveal the bizarre legislative and other obstacles that exist to roll out this clean technology on a grand scale. While Shell is successfully sued in the Netherlands to reduce their CO2 emissions, RDS is verplicht om via het concernbeleid van de Shell Groep eind 2030 de CO2-uitstoot van de Shell Groep en de toeleveranciers en afnemers van de Shell Groep terug te brengen met netto 45% ten opzichte van het niveau van 2019. This technique that can easily save 80% of fossil fuels worldwide is avoided like the plague. Welcome to Game Changers. Frank Collades is sitting at my table uh, and a number of years ago, he successfully invented and installed this technology in about 60 cars, buses and trucks. Welcome Frank. Hello, welcome, Hello. thank you. <laughs> great to have you here. Well, thank you for having me. And uh, great that you want to share this uh, remarkable idea, invention, technology with us. Yeah. So how did you come to the idea of uh, making this? Well, I wasn't the first, that's that's for sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't the first. Okay. So uh, I was, it already existed actually for so many years. And I just saw YouTube actually, and I was captured right away from that moment on. I was like, wow, this is crazy. Um, I, f I actually got an engine to run on water. that it was possible to actually turn water into a fuel. Can we do that? Yeah, so start building and, and from that point on, yeah, learning, building, learning, building, etc. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so um, maybe you can walk us through a little bit uh, on that journey. Mm -hmm. I uh, heard you did uh, a Volvo V40 yeah. uh, that could run uh, 100 kilometers on one liter. Yeah. And that's uh, for American people or people who do it in miles. It's 230 miles on one gallon. Yes. So that's uh, a lot. Um, can you say uh, about, uh, can you share a little bit about that? How, what, what yeah, it, it was a crazy thing actually. So we took an old one. Een Eensoe systeem hebben we ingebouwd in deze Volvo. Because that's an old Volvo, eh? you know. Yeah. They have Simple, uh, 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 no electronics, no stuff, yeah. you know. Uh, carburetor, there was no. Uh, we, we we took the carburetor off, and we we made actually a new carburetor. Ah, yes. Okay. And what we did actually is that we uh, put a um, uh, how do you say it um, um, a valve uh, uh, a vessel mm -hmm. in there uh, with gasoline, and uh, we used actually only the fumes of the gasoline and uh -huh. not the real gasoline. Uh -huh. Yeah, of course the gasoline, but only the fumes. Uh -huh. And the car runs perfectly on fumes. So wow. that's no problem. <laughs> and was that the first um, experiment you did with this technique? Uh, it wasn't the first, but it was somewhere in the middle, you know, ah, okay. about learning how things work. You know? uh -huh. Because uh, nobody can tell you that. There's, there are no books and that. Everything is uh, taken away, actually. Yeah. yeah. You had um, an experiment also with a Volkswagen Caddy mm -hmm. uh, with a peculiar um, yeah, that's, thing that's in uh, how much you can run uh, yeah. on one tank. Yeah. Can you uh, well, tell that, us a little was, bit about that? That was pretty strange, actually. Well, yeah. you have to see that. So. so I worked on cars that had no electronics, yeah. right? Uh, but if you work on cars that have electronics, and that is actually from the 1980s, around that, uh, so the carburetor was gone, and you have a, a, an electronic uh, fuel system, yeah. injection system, mm -hmm. and from there on, actually, it started to go, uh, well, off, <laughs> actually, you know? Okay. So, um, and then you learn that they knew this. They knew that this could happen. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, the reason why is quite simple. We made a we made a, a HHO cell, 
Uh, mm-hmm. So that's water gas, can yeah. you say it, or you know, uh, Brown's gas, it's also called. And um, so that's a pretty standard sim- system uh, with uh, plates in between them, water, you put salt in it, and you uh, put a current through it, uh, 12 volt, something like that. And then you have the gas, and the gas you bring it through the air inlet uh, into the engine, mm-hmm. and then you see what's happened. Now, it's, it's a pretty standard uh, situation. Now, um, uh, for Volkswagen Caddy, that was an interesting thing because um, when we uh, put the system on, uh, the first uh, thousand kilometers he ran, so you can one one tank on thousand kilometers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, but the second tank, eight hundred kilometers, and the third tank, six hundred kilometers, and there it's it's flat. And the thousand was the first in the experiment. Yes. So and uh, but it used to run regularly 600. 600 kilometers on one yes. tank yeah. yeah so uh so what we did actually is uh, uh we took the the board computer uh totally empty mm-hmm. yeah so there's no energy in it so he lost actually the the information yeah a reset yeah? the re- a reset we did a reset yeah. yes and uh, after that he did a thousand kilometers again 800 kilometers and 600 kilometers that exactly is very the same thing. strange. Well, it's not strange actually. It's it's like they put a learning system in it, mm-hmm. and uh, so they knew uh, how the graphic has to be. You know how much gasoline goes in and how much miles uh, can you can you go with it. Yeah. And, so that's um, it, it's not that they um, want to be as efficient as possible. No. It was programmed. You have to use this amount of gasoline. Yes. And it's built in in every car. It's not only uh, Volkswagen. Incredible. Yeah. So that's even very much larger than the diesel gate, actually. Uh, it is actually. Yeah. It, uh, it, um, I don't know if you know, uh, know the the light bulb exp- uh, the light bulb. Um, what is it? Um, conspiracy. The no. light bulb conspiracy. It's a YouTube film. You can see it, and mm-hmm. it's uh, pretty good actually. In the 1920s, light bulbs lasted 2,500 hours. Today, they last only 1,000 hours. What happened? A secret cartel was set up in 1924. Its goal, to reduce the lifespan of light bulbs to 1,000 hours. There you can see that from uh, conscripts, from um, official documents, yeah, that Philips and other companies they made a deal like uh, this light bulb uh, is going to uh, run for so long and that's it and that has to be broken yeah Uh, this is exactly the same thing planned obsolescence yeah absolutely and planned uses of fuel yes yeah 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 and it's still quite incredible it still still goes goes on on. yeah 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 and um then you had a mazda 626 yes and you had them (laughs) run for an inspection well, the thing what, was, what happened? yeah. Well, the thing was that the guy came to us and he had a problem. He had a, um, uh, the, the 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 output, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, that was broken. So the um, which output? Yeah, you see the the what cleans actually the uh, the environment, the oh, NOx. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know the the muffler. I wouldn't know. Uh, okay. I'm anyway, sorry. that was broken, and th- they have to put in a new one. But that cost a thousand uh, guilders. Yeah. In that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we didn't have yours in that time. <laughs> we had real Gilles. money. <laughs> yes, real money. Yes, good. So, a thousand guilders. But our system costs also a thousand guilders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And therefore, you don't need another muffler yeah, to buy. And it uh, would reduce your uh, uh, your cost of uh, fuel. Mm-hmm. So, he said, well, I'm going to install that system. Yeah. He went back with that system to the garage. They tested it. And they came out wrong because actually the NOx, so the the, the fumes actually yeah. were too less. So the it amount of pollution should be between this pollution, uh, and, that pollution? Uh, and that pollution. Yes. But if it's too clean, yes, it won't be certified as yes. uh, good. Yeah. So it's too clean. It's too clean. <laughs> That's really incredible. It's it's, it's strange. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, so we're suing strange uh, world. <laughs> we're yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, and we're suing uh, Shell for their uh, CO, uh, reduced CO two emissions. But we have laws laws in place 
that prevent uh, clean cars from uh, exactly, running in the streets. Yeah. So and that's the uh, that's the, the the part actually what I want to uh, put a finger on because yeah. um, you know the, the it's not about the technology. We have the technology already. It's mm -hmm. there for for hundreds of years actually. It's 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 plain in the open. H2 Global has developed another breakthrough proprietary process for extracting but fuel energy possible. from water. In fact. This generator runs on 95% water and only 5% gas. And here we have a scooter which runs on the same mixture. Um, the problem is actually is a line in 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 a document, uh, something that we say, oh, we don't uh, we don't do this, we do we do that. It's a political thing. Legislation. It has nothing to do with reality. Yeah. Nothing. No. And that's strange, you know. And yeah. It's it's yeah. And maybe you can tell a little bit about the Volkswagen Polo and the TNO report. Yeah. What, what is the story with that? Well, the thing is that uh, from uh, Watergas Pont Nu, we came actually to um, uh, that we, we got a mission yeah. to make a Volkswagen Polo. Uh, we build a HHO cell into that car mm -hmm. and then it goes to TNO. So that's a certification. Um, yeah, uh, what is it? A certification uh, company. Yeah, yeah. inspection uh, company, inspection company for, for uh, a big one in in Holland, yeah. in the Netherlands, and um, and there we uh, uh, we're going to look at the fumes that come out of the car. Yeah, putting the HHO into the engine. Yeah, and and from my understanding, and you built in an HHO cell. And yeah. is that something different than water injection? Uh, that's that's totally different, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, so water injection actually you make a mist and you inject that into and that's normal water. Yeah. yeah. But uh, HHO is actually you make gas from it. Uh huh. And gas and mist there's there's a difference. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's not uh, water gas. It's not that it's uh, uh, the the oxygen and the hydrogen lo uh, loose. Yeah. They are they're still bonded. Yeah. Yeah. But they have a different angle. All right. Yeah. So they are loosened, but it's not loose. And it takes right? less energy than to take them. Loose. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Of course. Yeah. 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 You yeah. don't you you don't want to uh, separate actually those two. It costs too much energy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something also they clearly don't understand that that in nature you don't see it. <laughs> no. You know. Uh, so but okay. Uh, so we did that experiment, mm -hmm. and uh, so we made a protocol that takes some days, you know, because uh, you sit there with some professors and engineers to to talk about uh, how are we how going are to do going that, to you know, what yeah. is uh, We're going to measure. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So we tested the, uh, this Polo. Uh, we we uh, changed the system. We tested the Polo, and we came to the conclusion that we had 25% uh, less energy mm -hmm. uh, input, uh, so less uh, fuel, yeah. uh, with the same distance. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, now we did that for several days, yes. uh, and uh, you have to do that on a correct way. Uh, so you always have a gas station on the same place, yeah. uh, the same uh, fuel in it, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, the same route, yeah, and uh, so you do that actually uh, scientifically, mm -hmm. right? So it wasn't like yeah, it's about no, no it was scientific. really correctly done. Yeah. yeah? So twenty five percent it was uh, less fuel, but TNO said. Uh, before, uh, we're not going to um, uh, measure the fuel intake. And that was strange. I found that strange because yes. if, if you have a car, if you let a, the, 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 a simple uh, technician see how much does the car do, and they can tell you it's one on ten, it's two on ten, it's yeah. th I don't know, but uh, anyway. Yeah. And now that's not possible with all your equipment? That was. Pretty weird, actually. Yeah. No, it's. It, but I, I think <laughs> it's not not possible, but it's not wanted. It's it, they it's didn't not want wanted. It. No. Yeah. No. Correct. But anyway, uh, let that in the middle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay. 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 Um, <clears throat> so uh, we did the uh, fume uh, testing, and there was a significant uh, reduction of NOx, um, uh, so carbon emission, yeah. uh, for seventy percent. Oh, okay. So that's a lot. 25% less fuel yes. and 75% uh, less... Uh, 70. 70%. 70, uh, 70 yes. less uh, NOx. Yeah. That's quite significant. Well, uh, it's that significant that uh, when you have a car that is, uh, let's say you have a Euro 5 car, yeah. yes, and you want to make it Euro 6, 
that's not possible. You have to buy a new one. Yeah. But if you install a HHO system, you can have an Euro 8 or Euro 9. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. So that means actually that uh, you have less NOx. Uh, and now we have a situation that uh, already some towns, they say, with an old diesel, you cannot enter the town anymore. Yeah. Yeah, because it's too polluting. Yeah. But with a system built <laughs> in, it's not. So what are we doing here? But it won't be certified because it's too clean. Well, the thing is that <coughs> the, the rules and regulations say that they only take the information of the uh, the guy who made it. So ah. the, f the factory who made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah? yeah. So only the official uh, number, yeah. they can take it. But if I have, a, for instance, if I have a gasoline car yeah. and I'm going to make it electrical, I'm going to do the certification uh, officer and he is going to uh, take a glance and, uh, you know, he's doing his thing. And then I get a certificate that it's now it's electric car. Why can't we do that with a normal diesel? And we say, listen, we build it in. Yeah. So now we have a different output. Yeah. So we get a different certification. Yeah. Well, I can tell you one thing. Yes. MRM. That's a big, uh, how do you say it, a factory of... Uh, uh, M-A-N, uh, MAN. Yeah, yeah. yeah, MAN, yeah. Yeah. Uh, of um, uh, big wigs. Yeah? Yeah. And um, uh, they have a patent from 1970. Yes. They already knew this okay. from 1970s. And, and what kind of patent do they have? HHO into, into the car. They knew it. And are but they using it? No, of course not. No, no, because no. they want to sell the newest Euro 7. Yeah. Or 7. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, so this this is... <clears throat> we're talking about environment. We're talking about uh, less pollution. We're talking all about this. But we don't do anything about it. No, no, no. Maybe you can explain a little bit about the relation to of particulate matter and NOx and a self-cleaning catalyst. Mm-hmm. Can, can oh. you elaborate on that a little? Yeah, well, the thing is that, uh, so we have a catalyst and normally the catalyst from, from the old days, yeah, if it was full, it was broke, you have to buy a new one. Yeah. Okay, now they invented a catalyst that is has a system built in mm -hmm. that uh, when it's getting full, yeah, yeah the, the, there's a nozzle, goes, do, does something, and then the temperature is rising and then they burn the NOx. Uh -huh. Well, there was a problem. Because if you have NOx uh, that is not burned in this way, mm -hmm. uh, it's a bigger particle. Yes. Yes. And a big particle, I can, uh, how do you say it, on normal terms, my lungs can deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we have a filter. Yeah. Yeah. And also the plants and everything has a filter. Yeah. You know? So it doesn't come into the lungs. But if you burn the stuff, it's getting uh, smaller and yes. smaller. Yeah. And now it comes into the lungs. Ah, and that's fine stuff, yes. or, or uh, uh, how do you call it in English? A small dust? Yeah, small dust. Yeah, yeah. So that's a big problem, and and the problem is really it's it's made, it's man-made actually. So, so in order to be less pollutive, we are actually more pollutive. Yes. Okay. So that's totally way around. Yeah. So if you put an an, an old diesel, for yeah. instance, or an oil, other term, I had a big wig from World War II, mm -hmm. yes? And uh, when you start this thing, the uh, black fume came out of the after the exhaust. It's yeah. really marvelous to see. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great, you know? Yeah. Okay, well, we put the HHO system on and there was no fume at all, nothing. Wow. So actually, when you look at what came out of the truck, yeah, yeah uh, it, it could be an Euro 8 truck yeah. for IKEA, yeah. but it's Euro 1. Uh -huh. So why? Ah. Why, why are we doing this? Oh my God. So the Euro six goes to the to the heap of uh, that's, that's going to be uh, well shredded, yeah. and now we have to build a new truck because of that simple rule. Oh my God! Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. So you had all these great results. Yeah. Um, uh, and you're not doing it uh, actively at the moment. No. What happened? <laughs> I, I, I presume that everybody's <laughs> a lot. Woo! Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, of so course. what what happened? Well, the thing is, uh, I did this, and uh, it, it went bigger and bigger, and then I had a company, and um, but I had already the people in the company who had other ideas. 
you know. Uh -huh. So it wasn't going very well with the company. Well, sabotage. And sabotage, and we had an explosion, and then actually it was finished. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, there was no money anymore, and I had to stop. And afterwards, I knew what happened actually, you know. So uh, who sabotaged it and how, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, you know, all yeah. the secrets come. Uh, in the open, yeah, 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 <laughs> in yeah. the end. But anyway, it was too late. Um, so then you know actually what's how the game is played. Yeah, you know. So uh, and it's really strange if you uh, if you're one of the guys who were talking about it because you really uh, engage this uh, because people around you they say like, is this a movie or something? Is this a, is this part of a book? No, this is real life. Yeah, it's what happens really. A lot of people cannot imagine that is this is real life, mm -hmm. you know, but it is. Well, and there's uh, and there have been inventors around that uh, couldn't live to tell uh, if they made game changers. Yes. So. Uh, uh, well, I'm still alive. I, I'm lucky you <laughs> sit here. I'm definitely, still alive. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mystery surrounds his sudden, unexpected death in 1998. Was it a brain aneurysm, the current accepted theory, or was it foul play at the hands of the powerful oil industry? At this moment, you can uh, water injection is used in uh, racing. Yes. And you can buy uh, water injections uh, kits for your car with guarantee. Yes. Why isn't that being widely used? Well, that's uh, that's a strange thing. Um, the thing is that um, uh, I did this years ago. Mm -hmm. I did investigations uh, years ago. Uh, how many years ago? Uh, what, what that was more than ten years ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I started then. Mm -hmm. yeah? uh, started longer, but but then was yeah, it was pretty. Uh, uh, I was really active. Yeah. You know, and uh, so I was. Uh, looking at YouTube movies, looking at uh, all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there is enough material written down and, um, well, companies are doing it, yeah. And um, so uh, there was a lot, actually, and a lot of people spoke about the uh, thing that when you put water in it, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, the car goes faster, you have more power, etc. Yeah. yeah. But there was a different thing also, and they said, uh, and your engine will be cooler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, years from now, yeah. actually, so, so we are now in 2024, and, um, and I didn't do a lot of those things anymore. You know, I, I abandoned that actually uh, six years ago, stuff like that. Okay. Now I'm looking at it because we have this conversation and I was searching on YouTube and searching on other n internet things and there's nothing anymore. The things you used to watch uh, when you were dealing yes, with this? Yes, all those information. Uh, for example, I saw movies, for instance, they had a, a car from 1970, somewhere mm -hmm. around that, and he drove for miles. With 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 such a tube of gasoline, mm -hmm. it's gone. Uh -huh. It's gone. Yeah. Everything is gone. And now the people who yeah. are selling also those systems yes. are not talking anymore about uh, mileage. Are they talking about cooling the engine? All right. Yeah, BMW so, has made also two cars with uh, this technique, mm -hmm. uh, which they say it cools the engine. Yes. And they're not talking about... Uh, no, uh, not, no, not for an instant. In this video, we're going to be talking about how water injection works. And more specifically, we're going to be looking at a system implemented on the BMW M4 GTS, which is one of very few production cars which has actually seen a water injection system. Of course, using that intercooler because you don't want that super hot air from the compressor going into your engine. It means more chance of knock, it means less power because it's less dense if it's heated up. So this air to water charge intercooler on this engine uh, is actually quite effective. That's pretty strange. Yeah. And the thing is that, uh, so now if you, if you have not new people coming into the equation and saying, okay, I'm going to invest this thing, they don't see anything about it. No. But this guy <laughs> saw this many years ago. I knew it. Mm -hmm. I know that it is there. I yeah. know that many people did it. But it's just like there was a glitch in the matrix. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But the, something happened, and I don't know what. But the information is gone. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's, that's pretty strange. Uh, yeah. You well, know? they can do a lot with algorithms and uh, hide stuff and erase stuff, yeah, especially uh, yeah. when it's uh, digital. No, I feel sometimes I feel like I saw another world mm -hmm. yeah, and now I see this one and there's a difference. You know? Yeah, a different timeline almost. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I talk to people and I say like, "What are you talking about? It's like, what? Where you're here on this planet, or do I come from another planet, or you know, a t different timeline, or something like that?" Yeah, yeah. So it's really weird. So. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's also uh, a lot of buzz about water-ish. Um, new technology uh, for example uh, and there's a, um, a video of toyota mm -hmm. uh, in which they say they will use water yeah um, evs are about to become a thing of the past courtesy of toyota's all new engine type which is completely unheard of this new engine that toyota has been working on is said to be the most eco-friendly engine in existence so buckle up and get ready for a complete turnaround in the world of cars as we explore toyota's new engine that will destroy the entire ev industry the engine that toyota is working on is actually believe it or not a water-powered engine you examined it, huh? Yes, I did. Well, and what were your findings? It wasn't Toyota. It wasn't Toyota? No, it was just a guy who, who was really, really handy in making movies, you know. Uh -huh. But I always look to press releases from Toyota himself. Yeah. And there was none. There was none. So because this would, would be great and good yeah. news, but so it, it was wasn't click, that. clickbait. Yeah, it was that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now uh, Elon Musk mm. uh, is also uh, coming out with news that he has he wants to run cars on water mm. in a groundbreaking announcement poised to redefine the future of transportation and energy elon musk has unveiled a revolutionary new water engine this extraordinary innovation promises to upend our formal understanding of engines potentially paving the way for an unprecedented era of environmental sustainability and you examined that too. Mm. What were your findings on that? Oh, it's really fishy. Fishy? <laughs> yeah, fishy. Okay. I don't know what, what to make of it. <clears throat> you know, you see the information and, and there's no other information about that, you know. So you cannot go to a website where, you know, things are explained and stuff like that. So no. it's, it's, it's a movie and you look at the movie and you say, oh, okay. It's, it's, so, I don't know. Well. Yeah. And, and the thing is that there is a difference, you know, because a lot of people think that uh, hydrogen is the same like water. Yeah. Well, hydrogen is a part of water. Yeah. There is oxygen still in it, you yeah. know. So water is hydrogen and oxygen. Yeah. So that's what water from the tap. Yeah. I'm calling, uh, I'm talking about water from the tap, what you put in your car. Yeah. It's not about you take water and you uh, divide hydrogen and oxygen and then you can use it in the car. No, because that's an expensive process. That's an expensive process. And so therefore it's not a game changer. Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. And but the thing is that people <coughs> go like around like, yeah, but we have all already uh, cars that run on water. Yeah. No, they run on uh, hydrogen. Yeah. Not water. You spoke to uh, Willem Vermeent once, uh, Mr. Belasting Deans, Mr. Oh. Tax in oh, the Netherlands. Right. Yeah, yeah. You want to <laughs> tell uh, a little bit about a conversation? Yeah, that was was a, was a was a nice thing to do. Well, anyway, so uh, we had we had a company, a small company, and I was I was busy with it, and uh, and um, the guy who uh, were running with this, uh, the two guys, you know, me and me and. It was the company the in where you installed the uh, this technique. No, it was before. Oh, okay. it was before. Yeah, yeah. and um, he is he's pretty good with computers and stuff like that, you know. So algorithms and and um, he said, well, it would be nice to have a, a commissioner, you know, um, who opens doors. Yeah. So well, Willem van Eind came up because the guy has an office in Maastricht. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's nearby, yeah. and uh, and he is everywhere. I mean, he's all over the world, you know. So uh, if he goes like, oh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to make a telephone call with uh, Philips or with Netcar or with you know another big company, and you can just go in and have a conversation with the the company so director, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's like that, you know. Yeah. Doors open. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the guy is uh, well, he has everything on speed dial. You know, mm -hmm. so the the minister calls him, uh -huh. 
not do you, do you want the other to, way okay yeah. yeah okay so um <coughs> uh, so it was pretty neat actually to to experience that uh, that you yeah. that that the doors open yeah, yeah? but um I was uh, engaged, of course, in uh, in technology and doing things uh, in in my lab, my small lab. <laughs> yeah, and um, so there was one day I said to Willem, Willem, we can go hundred percent, hundred percent on water. All right, so no yeah. uses of gasoline, just water. Yes, hundred percent. Okay, he said we're not going to do that. Okay. He's, he didn't say it's not possible. Yes, exactly. He didn't say that. So he said, we don't do that. Normal people say, that's not possible. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. because the energy and stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He didn't say that. He knew. He knew. He knows. Yeah. That so is possible, yeah. I knew exactly. It's, at that point, I think you... Dirty little, <laughs> you and, knew, you and, know. And why didn't he uh, want it? He said, uh, "Don't screw up with Shell." Uh huh. You know, don't screw with Shell because you know you will have a short life. I said, "Okay, then this is my last day here," and I went mm -hmm. because that is not my game. No, I will go 100 percent at least at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you explained uh, that's that's pretty remarkable, and you explained why you stopped then, and why didn't you start up again? No, I started up again. Of course, that was not the end. Okay. No, no, that was actually that was the beginning. Uh huh. Yeah, that was the beginning because I saw the light. I saw, oh my God, we can go 100 percent. Yeah. Huh? But I managed actually only 95 percent. All right. Yeah. Well, that's huge. Yeah. Well. No. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So yeah. actually. What I did actually, I made my own uh, carbon. Um, uh, how do you say it? Uh, uh, carbon fuel. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Because what is actually diesel and gasoline? It's the H. You need the H to so show the, the the hydrogen. Yeah. You need the oxygen, but that's outside of the car. It comes mm -hmm. into the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you need to see the, ca the the carbon. Yeah. Yeah. So that's actually the bond. What you need. Well, the H is already there. The O is all also there yeah. in, in, in the water. Yeah? The only thing you need is the C. Mm -hmm. But the C is actually a less thing. So you, if, if you look, for, for example, if you look for uh, how much uh, joule come out of a gas or you know, something that is, can explode, yeah. Yeah? how much energy, yeah? you see that the less Cs there are, the bigger the explosion, the bigger the amount of energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, for example, if you have uh, gasoline, you have uh, approximately like, let's say, 40 megajoule per liter uh, on energy. Yeah. But uh, hydrogen is 140. Uh, its energy uh, releases roughly two and a half times that of gasoline. Now, note the reference is not two and a half times that of fingernail polish. It's two and a half times that of gasoline. But in the hydrogen fraction technology, we have. Uh, developed the technology, as Laura showed me, that by igniting the hydrogen and oxygen gases and setting up the condition by which the uh, water molecule is prevented to form, then we now can tap into a very higher energy yield. And as a result of this, uh, the hydrogen fraction technology shows that we can release energy up to beyond 2.5 million barrels of oil per gallon of water in the signal. So why are we wanting actually the car on gasoline? Yeah. That's a strange thing. Yeah. You know, well, the thing is that we think that we need to separate those two. Mm -hmm. That takes a lot of energy. Uh, you have to store it. Uh, you know, you know all those problems because, you know, the, the, there's a lot of information about that. Yeah. So I won't go into that. But the thing is that, so you made actually something that's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. You made it pretty uh, difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And it's actually not difficult. It's incredible, huh? So, and that you were able in a small lab uh, with a small team yeah. uh, uh, and a small amount of money yeah. and a small amount of time mm -hmm. to make 95% uh, reduce in fuel use. Yes. That's spectacular. And mm -hmm. I imagine that uh, when you can do that, if... Uh, 
this is being looked at and examined widely mm -hmm. that uh, it would be easy to get to 100 percent i think so yeah but 95 is so already <coughs> you know did you um go to schools for example to say hey i have an idea and do you want to examine i tried and what did you uh, Arnhem, uh, Arnhem uh, the, the high school Arnhem uh, automotive. Sort of automotive yeah yeah I've been there and uh, I tried to explain it but uh, it's uh, well it's uh, you're talking to a table <laughs> really <laughs> that what you're talking to I don't know but uh, it's no it's, it's no no totally not no. it's incredible totally not because they say it's just not possible bye yeah that's it Okay. They, they won't look to the evidence. And then so. you also went to a kind of lab in Eindhoven. Mm -hmm. And why did you go there and what were your findings? Well, you know, to learn stuff, you know, how, how does actually the automotive work wor world works, you know, what are we doing actually here, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I don't come from the industry. Yeah. Uh, just, um, I'm a crazy guy from Maastricht. So <laughs> 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 what the fuck? <laughs> you know, so, okay. But, um, Anyway, so uh, there are some guys, and there's, there's there's school, and there's you know there are things, and but they said to me, listen, innovations we do that don't that do that here in, in the Netherlands. There's no innovation in Netherlands, you know, not real ones, you know. All right. I mean, yeah, we can make the ashtray a little bit that different, but <laughs> ashtray <laughs> that's, improvement. That's actually, uh, <laughs> that's actually the the the. the, the, the we draw the, the line level, here. Uh, <laughs> of innovation. Okay. No, yeah, it's really because you know a lot of people will tell you otherwise, but I don't care about that because uh, I talk to people who really knew, and the West is actually uh, well blind. I don't yeah. Know. So, all things considered, what uh, do you feel? What needs to happen to get this technique to the market that it would be available for everyone? Actually. Let's stay. Uh, let's make it simple. Mm -hmm. You know, we are talking about electric cars now. Why are we doing that? Because we know now electric cars are not that really environmental. No. Not not big ones. Not good ones. No. I mean, if you only look at the, uh, the battery systems, that it's really awful. Yeah. You know, we are killing the planet. Huh? Yeah. So <clears throat> why are we doing that? Because we have to reduce CO two. We have to reduce. You know the the the. the yeah better environment yeah okay i understand that so so what we're doing actually we take all the cars we push them away we push them through the the uh, we shred them up shred. and we yeah. make new cars is that good for the environment you think no 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 eh? so why can't we take old cars put the hho system in there what if if you put it if you make this in in, in great numbers yeah uh, they cost maybe four or five hundred uh, uh, euros that's it yeah and then you have a totally brand new system actually that and, once and you would and probably in one month you would save it uh, from the fuel you would save yes yeah <clears throat> yeah well let's say we don't save the fuel let's say we we do the same fuel yeah let's say just uh, exam Only for that. the reduce of uh, but your emissions. Emissions. Yeah. The, the problem is solved. Yeah, 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 it's incredible. What are we doing here? Yeah. We are joking around. Wow. Well, the thing is that I know some people are getting rich from it, but not uh, the normal people. No. I can no, tell no. you that. Wow. So we have a, a great game changer here. And um, is there anything you would like to add to... Um, here uh, in, in regards to this game changer at this moment well the thing is that um the only reason actually i uh, sitting here and talk about that you know it's not that i'm going to do it myself mm -hmm. yeah? uh, because i did that yeah yeah uh, i have a lot of information about it because i did many experiments many things yeah um uh, but i have now a business uh, i'm doing water treatment stuff and and I'm very very busy with that yeah so and i know i can't do that 
with that also together. No, I'm not no, Superman, no. sorry, but it's it's just not <laughs> <Well>. possible. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a cape, but uh, no, yeah, yeah. no. But you know, um, <clears throat> you have to draw the line somewhere. You yeah. know? So uh, fair enough. And we are and we are very busy with things, and uh, they are really great. But yeah. so we need people for it. Yeah. And we need people who can look through it and can look really what is now really the problem. It's not a technical problem. It's it's a political problem. Yes. Really, it's a really a political problem what we have. Well, and also that uh, political, I, I totally agree, but I also think that we as a people have to stand up and we have just to do stuff, you know? Like sure. If this is, if you like see this and you think, hey, uh, I'm going to investigate this a little, and mm -hmm. if it's possible. Yeah. Um, uh, There's a lot of information. It, it is possible. Yeah. So we just have to do it. So that it can't be ignored anymore, any longer. So it would be great if all kinds of schools around the world would investigate this and experiment with this. So concluding, this technique needs to be acknowledged and developed with lots of big opportunities for students and businesses. Some very strange rules and regulations must be changed in order to facilitate and legalize clean and efficient fuel usage, with lots of opportunities for politicians, lawmakers, judges, advocates, and not to be forgotten, the media. Cars must not be shredded, like the hundreds of thousands after Dieselgate, but it must be enabled that cars get a new environmental index according to the real values of emissions coming out of cars during MOT and other inspections, and not use the given industry standards, which is pure plant obsolescence. It should also be made possible <clears throat> to drive cleaner cars than is currently permitted. It is of course crazy that cars can be too clean for the environment and are therefore rejected during the inspections to end in the shredder. So the MIT inspection must allow cleaner NOx values. The software from all brands of cars must be examined in the same way as in the Dieselgate investigations, but now to take a close look at the programming of fuel use. How is it programmed and what does it do? We have evidence that the software in cars enforces a pre-programmed use of gasoline. Only by being able to see and influence that, it is likely that fuel use can be highly optimized on a grand scale. Small dust is a very big problem at the moment. Koreans are still inhaling fine dust particles that's especially bad for teenagers because their lungs are not yet fully developed. Breathing becomes harder when there's a lot of fine dust in the air. Experts say these particles are so fine that once they pass through our airways, they get stuck in our lungs. It is mainly because of the catalysts in car burning the emissions that the bodies of humans, animals and plants can handle into small dust that humans, animals and plants cannot handle. With the solution of water injection, the emission is almost completely gone and this problem would not exist anymore. With water ethanol injection, I never have to worry about carbon deposits in my engine ever again because the water alcohol solution acts almost like a steam cleaner inside the engine and it keeps the insides permanently carbon deposit free. And of course, it must be made possible to measure fuel use in new experiments to come at the Dutch TNO. This is the time to take sustainability to another level. The time in which we lead the world in safety. The time in which we make lives healthier. And we battle climate change from space. This is the time of yes we can, of here we go, to there you are. Because this is the time to build a better future together. By uniting the power of science and enterprise and getting everything to work together. Industry, technology, data, everything. This is our time, the time for innovative solutions.
for society, government and entrepreneurs. TNO, innovation for life. Their mission is aligned, but now we kindly ask them to act accordingly. To put our money where our mouth is, we are very excited that we are going to have an HHO cell built into our company car in the beginning of May, and we will share our findings with you. It helps us a lot on YouTube if you click the like and subscribe button, share it on social media, and forward it to schools, politicians, businesses, and friends. You can visit our website on earth-matters.nl, subscribe to our newsletter, and become an Earth Friend member to support our work. We have a couple of exciting episodes planned, but if you feel there is an invention that is an absolute game changer in the fields of energy, water or health, please let us know at info <coughs> at earth-matters.nl. I want to explain actually the HHO system. Uh, well, you can buy it in uh, several uh, companies uh, all over the world, actually. And uh, in the USA, there's a, there are a lot of companies. Um, so a quick explanation how it works. You have uh, the engine and the engine has an intake. So we have the, the air filter. It's basic, eh? basic stuff. Okay. And now we have the HHO system with the plates. It makes uh, the, uh, the water gas and we put the water gas into the air filter and from the air filter it goes to the engine. Now the thing is that um, when you uh, want to control the water gas system, you need a signal. signal. And that signal is there that it is going to respond, is going to uh, go on and off. Yes, because you don't want to make gas when the engine is uh, shut down, because then the, the gas will, uh, will blow up, actually, when you start the engine, and then you have serious damage. I can tell from experience in this one. So um, you need uh, a signal. Well, the signal, what we always did was from the uh, uh, pump, to pump the fuel, actually, into the engine, because when you really uh, engage the engine, this pump will work and it will shut off if you shut off the engine. So that's actually the most uh, best thing to do uh, with this system. Then you have another thing uh, and that is the board, com the computer. Because um, when you have the exhaust, here when you have the exhaust, uh, there is something built into it and that controls actually or that sees and registers the oxygen level. Now that's a big, that's a bit of a problem, but because the thing is that when you put water gas into this system, you get hydrogen and oxygen. So there's actually more oxygen in the engine, and that will go to the exhaust pipe, and then he registered, hey, there's too much oxygen. So then he says, hey, it's too much oxygen. So they'll build the computer will want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, level that out. Now, to uh, uh, have this problem uh, solved, uh, you can buy a chip. Um, I know the Volo chip, for instance, I worked with that, and it was uh, pretty good, actually. So you say that Volo chip. So you plug that in, actually, into the bus of the, uh, of the computer. And then you can change actually those values so that the engine doesn't know actually that this is going on. Now, it doesn't work always, I can tell you that from experience. So it's, it's not a foolproof system. Um, uh, there's always a disclaimer, eh? of course. <laughs> so, but anyway, so um, be aware that if you're going to do this, you do it on your own risk, on the engine, it's your engine. You can do whatever you want with it, but be aware there's a lot of things going on in, in that engine and in that computer system. So it's not foolproof. Um, if you don't do that, it could be also that you're going to take more fuel actually into the engine, what actually what you normally use. So, uh, and that is of course, that this system 
says, okay, I'm going to shut down actually the air inlet. So there's actually uh, more uh, fuel needed to have a proper uh, injection. And then you have more fuel instead of less. So be aware of that. Now, how can we go from um, uh, 95% and 5% biomethanol, for instance. Oh, you, you can use biomethanol, but you can use actually anything uh, like uh, normal gasoline or methane, ethane, whatever. Uh, we use biomethanol because we want to have pure bio-based uh, uh, fuel. Uh, that was it. Um, now, the thing is that uh, it's a totally different approach, actually, from HHO. Yeah? So if you want to have this, uh, it comes Really, <laughs> that, that's some work, I can tell you. If you want to do this, you have to do something. So, you have the engine. And the engine needs uh, air and needs gasoline. Now, the thing is that you cannot use the normal engine electronics anymore. That's out of the door. That doesn't, doesn't work anymore. Okay? The thing what you need to do is actually to mix both up. So, you have water and you have the carbon, because that is actually what it is. Huh? We, uh, so again, what is fuel? We have the H, you have the C, and to get this together to explode, you need the O. Okay? So the H is hydrogen, the C is carbon, and the O is the oxygen in the air. But the oxygen is already there in the water, because we're not going to uh, divide H and O. So you have plain, normal tap water. Okay? Okay. What we do is, we take a vessel, and uh, what you do is you put here a fogger. Yes, a fogger. Okay, fogger. Uh, you find that in a shop that uh, sells actually parts for ponds, stuff like that, you know, where you have water and stuff. No? And that fogger makes fog, okay? So you have fog here. Okay. Well, you do that in another vessel also with the carbon, right? You have the fogger, and here is the ethane, methane, whatever you like. So let's say it's normal fuel. It's like it's gasoline, yeah? You take gasoline here. Okay? Now, be aware, when you buy those foggers, you have to see that the fogger is, that you can uh, open it, and you take another uh, different ceiling. Because if you, uh, the fogger is always uh, there with a rubber ceiling, and if you put gasoline into that, or ethane, methane, the fogger will go uh, soft. Uh, I mean, the, the, the rubber goes soft, so, and then it will break down. So, yeah, so take a different seal for this fogger. So you make here also fog. Now, those two come together, yeah? So you have to make a valve, a valve, yeah? To, um, uh, to mix it, yeah? So you have to have more here and then here, okay? And that goes right into the engine, and then you have an explosion. At least I hope so, because otherwise you did something wrong. Now the thing is, um, what you be aware of uh, is that when you start the engine, you need more of this, less of this. But when the engine is getting hotter, less this and more of this. Okay? So that's complex, I know, but that's how it is. Then a different thing is, here, you need to do something with the uh, ignition. Because the ignition, what we have actually normally on an engine, is actually not working on this model. Well, when you start off, yes. But when you get more water into it, you're going to notice actually that water uh, fuels up very, very fast. Faster than actually gasoline. It's quicker. Yeah? It has more power. It is, has more megajoule, more power, but it's also faster. Yeah? So, you have to, uh, so if you have here the ignition time, yeah? you have to put them actually forward. Yeah? So, uh, so when the, the piston goes up, 
again, you know, well, you get the picture. Huh? I cannot explain it so good in English, sorry, but uh, that's what you get. <laughs> but you get the information firsthand, so pay, t pay attention. So that's what we have actually. We have actually a very simple uh, uh, thing to, to make here, actually. Uh, uh, to want it. Uh, yeah, nee, dat moet even opnieuw. <laughs> ja? Oké. Okay. Okay. Ah, je knipt natuurlijk. Okay. So you have here actually a very simple way uh, to do this. Uh, you can do this with, with normal material. Yeah. The problem lies actually into the thing that um, uh, the ignition is uh, on the time that you don't have a flashback. That's, that's the most dangerous stuff, because here you have fog, uh, and that is very dangerous, of course, because you have a volume, and that is already fogged, and within a small ignition it will ignite, and this will blow up. Well, and speaking also from experience, um, this doesn't blow up, of course, because it's water in that side. Now, the thing is that uh, what we um, noticed, actually, is when you heat up this one, you get into the next phase. So, first you're going to do this. Yes? So you're getting experience of how this really works. So you have to get the feeling of how it works. Yes? And then you extend this. Yes? With uh, that you take the outlet of the engine that is hot. Yes? It's at least 250, 300 degrees. Okay? And then you make something that this outlet goes beside this one. Yeah. So you heat it up, actually. Yeah. Um, I can make a different drawing from that, but basically this is actually how it works. Because what we saw is when we heated this up, um, we got better results, much better results. And we went to the, that 95%. But if you're going to start, you have to start first with basics. Because otherwise you miss something. It's a learning process. That's very important to understand. And this is not something of a couple of days working. No, you need really some time to do it properly. Okay. Now. So. If you have this vessel with this uh, fogger, then you have an outlet, and then you have uh, the exhaust, yes, so you have here the engine, the exhaust will come here, yes, and this will actually go around. And then you have this other vessel, also with the fogger, uh, with the ethanol or uh, fuel. And this will go here, and you're going to mix it up. Yes? So here's a valve, here's a valve. You're going to mix it up, and then it goes to the engine. You're going to play with this one, and then you're going to see if this is heated up, this process is going to be very fast. And um, and then you have a perfect working engine. And, um, well, playing, of course, with the exhaustion time, of course, because that's uh, when, when you're going to mix it up. And then you have uh, the magic. Uh, that's that's uh, the first engine aspect is the learning engine. Yes, that you learn actually how it works, that you get your uh, how things straight, you know, uh, so that you learn how to work with the foggers, learn how, how the engine reacts, uh, stuff like that, you know, because you need that time, you need that time to uh, really understand actually the mechanics of it. Uh, it's a feeling, it's, it's not about, um, well, how do you say it, it's, of course it's science, but, you know, it's more than a feeling than actually 
science eventually, but <laughs> the feeling is very, very important uh, about this one. So, um, because you can imagine that if people are going to do this without any education like me uh, on this uh, property, on this uh, thing, then um, you can imagine that uh, how is it poss possible that we can come to this conclusion actually. It's about the learning process and anybody can do it, really anybody. As long as you get patience, you know, do it on the proper way, yeah? take your time and learn. That's actually the only thing we need to do here. So this drawing is actually um, a sketch of uh, how you uh, fog the water and how you uh, heat the water so it comes heated up already in the engine. Uh, because if it's heated up the bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen is going to get less. And that's what you need actually because the thing is that what is uh, what happens actually in the engine that's maybe that's really important to understand. So because we uh, we think that we need to um, get rid of the bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen, yes? That's actually not true, because the engine does it for you. It, it's in the process. Because when it gets here and it gets ignited, it will do this in milliseconds, right? So that's the problem, actually. We are, we are not looking correctly to the whole process. You see that the engine is a part of that process. It does it for you. You don't need to do it before. It does it itself. Right? And it goes really, really fast. So that's actually why people say, oh, it cannot be done, it's too costly, it costs too, too much energy. But if you understand this, you see, <laughs> No, the energy is already there in the process. You mentioned that uh, you could do it on 100% water, and it, uh, in this drawing there is still gasoline. Yes. So how would you suggest you go totally without gasoline? And that's a different story. The thing is that we work here with normal engines. And if you work 100% with water, you have to understand that water has incredible lots of power. And actually, it's going to implode most of the time when you don't uh, 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 mix carbon with it. And, well, we did some testing with engines uh, only with 100% uh, uh, 100 water, and they all broke down because the uh, amount of power which you have in the engine is so great, uh, it's, I think it's not doable. Um, I think you need to invent actually a different motor for that, because <laughs> it breaks down. Water is too powerful. Water is too powerful, yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, well, anyway, it's, it's like what we said. It's, it's amazing that we use gasoline, uh, because it's the most inefficient fuel actually there is. So it's, it blows my mind. Okay, here I have a tank, a reservoir, which I'm going to fill with water. This pump is then going to take the water from the tank, pressurize it, and send it to this little nozzle, which is going to inject the water into the engine. Okay, so that's the plan. Now let's install all of this onto the car. Okay, so here's the setup installed. Here's the tank with the water. There is a line going from the tank to the pump. And then another line continues and goes into the engine bay right here. It enters and then it gets injected right here. There's a nozzle there. 
underneath this cable for the throttle body. It injects water here before the throttle body and the intake manifold. And how much water and when is it being injected? It's controlled by this controller, the electronics right here. And inside the car, I have this little display which also tells me what's going on, how much water when, and this little light which glows red when the tank is completely empty. Thank you so much for watching and your supports and your comments. We are looking forward to see you at the next Game Changer, changing the game one by one together. When you look at the global news, it seems like humanity is in a difficult situation at the moment. But solving many complex problems in this current era is actually very simple. It's just not desirable. Because solutions that give people, animals and the earth a dignified existence in sight often keep space with loss of profit for multinationals. The better and often simpler the solution, the greater the loss of profit. In recent years, we at Earth Matters have seen many concrete solutions in action in the areas of health, energy, economy, water and much more, which, when applied on a grand scale, will make most social, economic and climate change problem a faint memory in very little time. In Game Changers, you get to see a variety of inventions and solutions. Our broadcast will line up as a charter and undeniable handle for real change. In addition to making interesting TV, we want to appeal to politicians, entrepreneurs, scientists, lawyers and media who really want to make a difference. Nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And it's time. For all people, all animals, all trees and our earth.